me to see you. <laughs> Dearly Father, we just come before you and we thank you for this opportunity that we have to go um, to chapel. We just um, pray that your words will be spoken in us and through um, my class and um, just pray that you will soften the hearts of the students to hear what you have um, to say. Okay, so our class this year, our theme we chose was most of you know, joy is not happiness. They're not the same thing. Um, joy is just the... Um, it is that, like, it's something that comes from the Lord, and it's what you experience through trials. It is when you just know and trust in the Lord that he will provide for you no matter what, and whatever trials you go through, he will be there for you. He is your strength, and you rely on that. And so we have a clip that is supposed to um, kind of explain or accentuate this. Yeah, maybe. Nope, we do not. All right, so I'm going to turn it over to Travis. Hey. That's okay, I'll describe to you what you would see. Imagine if you're in a movie theater and you're watching Inside Out, because that's what you'd see. <laughs> We we're going to show you the uh, ending of Inside Out, so I don't know how many of you have seen the ending of uh, Inside Out, but um, so kind of throughout the movie, there's, what? It's a good movie. Um, throughout the whole movie, kind of the main character is, uh, so the premise of the movie is that there's emotions in your brain, and they kind of control uh, what you do and who you are. And one of the main characters is joy, and there's some other emotions in sorrow. And kind of throughout the whole movie, uh, joy is almost portrayed more as happiness, because uh, there's these memories that are made, and each one's a different color. And if you remember, um, you know, there's happy memories and there's sad memories, and, and then there's you know mad memories and all these different things. But they're like individual memories, and they and they don't mix or anything like that. And then at the very very end, which is the clip that we were going to show, um, there the main character, I think it's Riley or something, um, runs away. But then she returns, and she's like crying, but she's happy because she's home, but she's sad because she ran away and it's just these mixed feelings and this new memory is made and it's like blue and yellow which means that it's joy and sorrow and it's this new thing and um, we wanted to show that because uh, it's the thing that I got from the movie is that uh, joy is all, can also be mixed with sorrow um, and not every emotion that we have is just simply happy sad angry um, we have especially with joy um, we can have joy experienced through um, particularly sorrow um, and sad times in our lives. So we brought uh, some of the uh, students from our sophomore class to come and talk about different experiences that they've had um, with joy in uh, times of sorrow and sadness and um, hardship. So I'm going to bring up Megan now to talk about her story. Okay, so I was told to come up with a story of... Um, feeling joy through times of not necessarily just sorrow, but times where it, you're having a difficult time in life. And I know we all experience that. Um, so after my freshman year at Grace University, I was looking forward to going home last summer. Um, but going home also meant that I had to find a job. Uh, and some of you may experience this as well, but in my hometown, if you don't already have a job from the school year or you're not home in March to apply for jobs, it's kind of difficult to find one unless you have connections. And unfortunately for me, I don't have a lot of significant connections in my hometown, so I was down to looking for a job the old-fashioned way, going door to door and asking for applications. I did this for the first several weeks of summer, and I applied at a bank, the local Boys and Girls Club, a daycare, a coffee shop, and a couple of retail stores, but I still came up empty-handed. I was getting really frustrated and really angry. Um, but I had one direction that I had left to go, and I really didn't want to go that direction. I could go the food service route. So waitressing or fast food. Now, waitressing for me is just not the job. I'm a klutz, first of all. So carrying a large tray of food through a restaurant would spell disaster. And second of all, I have the memory of a goldfish. So if you ordered something, I would likely forget by the time I got to the kitchen. Um, so waitressing was just not the job for me. And I didn't really want to work fast food either because, well, honestly, it was mostly because kids from my high school still worked there, and I didn't really want to have them for coworkers. 
Um, and I refused to apply at these places, but in the end, it looked like I was going to have no choice. Um, but one day before I was about to send out another stack of applications, my uncle contacted me. Um, and my uncle John is the one that works on the ranch that my mom grew up on. Um, growing up, I spent a lot of time on the ranch with my brothers. It was a safe place that my parents could send me. My grandparents would load us up with a bunch of sugar, and we had plenty, of do plenty to do and plenty of space to wear it off. I loved the ranch, but I hadn't worked on it for years. I would go to about one or two brandings a year, but I hadn't done much more than that since I was about 10. So when my uncle contacted me, I was hesitant, but I took the job anyway because at least I didn't have to work at McDonald's. As it turned out, my uncle would let me work pretty much whatever hours I wanted, and I had to do just a couple of tasks that he gave me. I had to mow both my grandparents and my uncle's lawns, which was mostly weeds. Um, I had to paint a fence that surrounded my uncle's house, and I had to paint a couple of cattle feeders that were scattered across the ranch. It was simple enough, but there were several downsides to working on the ranch, too. Um, I had no cell service, no internet, because my grandparents don't have Wi-Fi, and no friends besides my grandparents. I hated being unplugged, and social media was how I kept in contact with my friends from here and my friends that didn't live in my hometown. And I will be shallow and say that I love my air conditioning. My grandparents' house does not have air conditioning. Uh, I would work outside in the heat in like 90, 100 degree weather all day and have to come back to no air conditioning. So the only solution I had was really, really, really cold water or ice. Um, so I really hated it. The ranch was a job, but I really, really hated it. I wanted to be back in town with civilization and with my friends who I hadn't seen all school year. I was mad at my family, at myself, and for God, and at God for putting me in a position that I really did not want to be in. The job was less than ideal, and if it wasn't for the fact that my uncle basically gave me free range of my time, I would have quit working on the ranch and gone back to town to work at McDonald's. At the beginning of the summer, I struggled a lot with my faith especially since I had moved back home and my routine changed once again. I'd fallen away from God, seeking after friendships and relationships for the first half of the summer, and basically forgetting God. Although I had seemed happy, my soul was lacking. My fleshly desires had been fulfilled, but I was not spending the time that I needed in God's word and in prayer to substantiate what my soul desired. My time in solitude, accompanied with the surroundings of Wyoming countryside on the ranch, though, Thinking about God's creation and how I'm a part of that creation was a good time for me. I know that ultimately God has a plan for me and that I'm good because I'm a part of his creation. I'm broken and everyone is because of sin. But the summer on my ranch reminded me of how important it is to find even the smallest sliver of joy in trying situations. Although my trying situation was purely out of my own selfish desires, I could still turn around and find joy in it. After a few lonely weeks on the ranch, I came to cherish my alone time. I would get up early in the morning, eat breakfast, lace up my work boots, and go to the rundown pickup that my uncle had given me to drive on the ranch. I realized that all of my complaining and grumbling really did me no good. I was simply not being grateful for what God had given me. A job, time with family I hadn't seen all school year, and time to really reflect on what he was wanting to teach me. By the end of the summer, I loved working on the ranch. Long days to myself, with nothing to accompany me but rabbits, the Wyoming breeze, and my lark song. I cherish getting the day to think about God and who he is, and just to spend time praying while I worked on painting. I know God put me on the ranch this summer to truly find joy in discovering him wherever I'm at. God can bring pure joy, and I'm so lucky I found it, despite my own grumbling and complaining. So I encourage you guys, whatever you may be going through, to seek out God. I know this tends to be the cliche Bible student answer for everything and all of life's problems, but I advise you not to only seek God for his guidance, but also his joy. You can't have true joy apart from God, because he is joy. In order to find joy in, in any trying or bad situation, you must seek God first. Even if you're tr in a trying situation that you're not most enthusiastic about, like working on a less than ideal job on a ranch, I urge you to seek joy no matter the situation. Because even in the work, worst of circumstances, it can create the greatest opportunity to glorify God.
Good morning. Good morning. Wow. All right. You guys are you guys are up. All right. So last year um, at SBA elections, I made a remark about how many people uh, were here. I'm going to try not to do that uh, this time. I'm going uh, to be reading from Galatians 5 and James 1, just a couple of verses before I get started. You guys can follow. You guys cannot. Totally up to you. Um, reading from the New King James. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self control. Against such there is no law. And then James 1, verses 2 and 3. My brethren, count all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your, your faith produces patience. So I was asked to share a story um, about how through a test, through a trial, um, I. The joy that I had received um, helped, uh, helped to produce uh, my faith and to strengthen it. Um, and so I'm going to share a more recent one um, that I encountered um, in the past year and a half or so. Uh, my two questions are gonna, to you guys are going to be, what is your attitude when God tests your faith? What, how do you react when life stinks and when life throws you a curveball? So uh, my freshman year, my first year of college last year, um, you know, it was an exciting time. I was away from home, getting out on my own. I came here, was making new friends, playing basketball. Uh, everything was going great. I was learning. I loved classes. And then uh, a few weeks into basketball in the preseason practice, um, we were just running through a simple drill, um, and I went to cut on my, right, on my right leg, and I just felt it buckle. Um, I'd already had knee surgery on that knee once. Um, and then uh, a few weeks later, I went in for an MRI, and I got a call that um, that ligament, the, a the ACL that I had re reconstructed, that I had repaired um, just a couple years ago, had been torn again. Um, and I remember I was, I was hurt, I was crushed, but I was hopeful. Um, I, I figured, you know, that God did have a reason for this, that he wanted me to experience something. Um, I just didn't know what that was, and so I was kind of, I was excited uh, to see, to see how God would work in me. Um, and then if you guys don't know uh, what the recovery process for a 20 ACL looks like, um, for about two weeks, you can't really move. Um, for a few days after the surgery, you can't even get out of your bed. Um, moving your knee just even, you know, from here to here takes a lot of work. Um, and uh, after about a week or so, a week or two, um, in in bed and just kind of walking around on crutches, you start going through physical therapy. And physical therapy is at a minimum four months, usually it's uh, six to nine months of recovery time. Um, and so I had gotten the surgery in December of 2014, um, and so I started recovering in January of 2015, so second semester of last year. Uh, and about two months in, um, I got really frustrated with myself, and I got really angry and really down. Um, I wasn't making any progress. Um, I, didn't, I didn't see any hope. I didn't find any joy in what I was doing. I felt defeated. Um, I, as I'm very prone to do, had actually, I'd put up a, a facade. Um, I had made it seem like everything was fine. Everything was okay. It was going great. My recovery was awesome. Everything was peachy. But in reality, my spirit was despondent. Um, I didn't, I, f I felt dry. I didn't feel, um, I didn't feel any joy. And then in February, uh, there was a small, a small group of us praying um, just in, in, in one of the rooms on our, in my hall one day. And I remember looking up uh, at the ceiling. I was just talking to God, and I said, God, this sucks. Um, I don't know what you're doing in me. I can't play basketball. I can't lift. I can't run. I can't do anything that you have allowed me to do, um, allow me to take joy in. Um, and then... Uh, a couple weeks later, I was talking, talking to a friend from high school, um, and he told me to look, to look at God, to look at who he is, to look at his character, to look at what he's promised, and who he's promised to make me into. Um, he told me to, to look at those that God has put in my life, to my family, to my friends, to my mentors, to, everyone, to my siblings, um, to see that in this life, you're not alone. You don't go through things by yourself. Um, and so to go back to Galatians, it says the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, um, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. I think there's, Paul made a very conscious decision when he made that list, um, when he put love first and then joy second. Um, I realized that my love wasn't in the right place. Um, I put my desire to be healthy 
I love to be an active person. Um, I love for basketball, um, just for sports in general. Uh, I'd put that over love of, love, the love of my Lord and the love of my support system. I had done what Augustine Rayleigh describes as disordering my loves, um, and that had, caused, that had caused me to lose my joyful outlook on life. And then I, kind of, I, realized that, what, I realized what I had done, and I got back to the Word. I looked at what God promised to make me into through Jesus Christ. Um, and then after that, my, I, I looked at who he placed. Um, my friends, specifically Aaron Taylor, Mike Vandenbroek, um, and Brandon Banks. Those three especially, I remember, were huge um, in helping me realize the joy that I had found, the joy that I had had that, and that I had lost. Um, that hope that wasn't there for the longest time started to come back. Um, I, I looked at those around me and I knew I wasn't isolated. Those friends, um, those three are just a few examples, um, they embraced me in my brokenness. Um, they were willing to suffer with me like it says and talks about in 1 Corinthians 12. I just had to have the humility to let them. Um, after I noticed that, it no longer mattered to me if I recovered the next day or the next week or even in the next year. Um, I wouldn't let my trials inhibit my ability to rejoice in what the Lord blessed me with. So my encouragement to you um, is like that old uh, children's song, to count your many blessings, count them one by one, look and see at what the Lord has done. Life isn't meant to be lived alone. Share your sorrows, share your sufferings with others, and they will be halved. The Spirit will work in you, showing you all that God has given you through Christ. He will empower you to see all the good things He has done in you, and you will be able to be joyful no matter what comes towards you. Thank you. Yeah, those are uh, great, great encouragements for all y'all. I just want to say a few things. Um, just that as we're traveling into this like final stretch, uh, a few weeks ago, I was getting real stressed out, like real, real butt hurt about everything that's going on. All right. And uh thing that uh, kind of, I was just kind of going this downward spiral where I was like, I got to do this, this, and this, this, and then I never did it, you know, at all. Like, I just sat and I watched movie trailers, which are great. Rogue One, what up? And, like, just, just falling into this, like, pit of nothingness. But um, reading a few things in class and finding solitude um, was a huge thing for me. Something Megan touched on. She found solitude um, in the great Wyoming ranches and stuff. <laughs> Don't dip your fries in them. And then uh, ranch, guys. And then, uh, and then also just mutual encouragement from, from my brothers in Christ and my sisters. So uh, that Zach touched on, I think that's great. Um, and then I, I found solitude and taking the time out of your day, cutting lunch off 30 minutes early to go pray. We have prayer rooms, if you guys know about those. Those are very valuable, all right? And they're underused, they're great. Anyway, shout out to prayer rooms. So, and then finally, touching on the inside out, uh, thing. Um, Riley, the character, became more mature because of the mixture of joy and sadness. And um, I think God does that with us. He, he uses those times of suffering to refine us and uh, to mold us into to, uh, a Christian who's better used to serve him, a good vessel for him. So my encouragement to you is as you're getting stressed out, as things are stacking on, don't get, don't, don't be all, don't be like me, okay? Go find the Lord. Seriously. He gives you this supernatural joy and motivation to do things. You have purpose in life because of Christ. You have purpose to do your, your work, your schoolwork because of Christ. And because of that, he will bless you with that and become, make you a more mature Christian and someone who's better used to serve him. So that's my encouragement for you. I want to pray, and then Travis, stick around. Travis is going to tell you about a few cool things coming up from the sophomore class. So bow your heads and pray. <sighs> Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for each and every person in this room. They are valuable to you. Um, Lord, help us to, to, to be molded and shaped through suffering and our response in suffering. Uh, Help us to respond well in suffering so that we can be better vessels for you and put to good use, Lord God. Just thank you for the, the people who spoke today. 
uh, bless them for doing that and sharing their hearts uh, with with grace. And uh, I just want to pray um, that lives will be impacted because of this and that we will do our work well and that we will honor you with that. So thank you for this day and thank you for the, uh, the days to come, as many as you want us to have. In your name, amen.